first arrived. Emergency. Please first arrive. Emergency. to the queens hello ladies gentlemen and everybody inside and outside of the gender spectrum and welcome back to stardom quest the best weekly stardom podcast anywhere in the world i am as always alex and i am joined by dylan hi dylan hi dylan or i mean hi alex oh, <laughs> um yeah how's it going guys we're back with stardom quest <laughs> i'm a little sick today i'm a little sick so i'm just kind of all over the place uh, that was that was partially a bit, but also partially just like what I naturally wanted to say for some reason. <laughs> okay. right. I see. Um, you know, uh. you really you really bring the color to Stardom Quest. I gotta say. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> No, 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 no. I was I was drinking water oh, and I choked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I agree. I agree. I do bring the color to Star on Quest with your pale ass. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, that's you true. know, co- color commentary. And, yeah, color commentary. Yeah. Kind of like you know. But we di- we digress. We digress. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, oh man. What a great start. Yeah. Um, head on over to the five star network.co for all of the latest uh, podcasts and articles about the wonderful world of pro wrestling. Uh, we've got stuff covering just about everything. So, you know, check it out. I'm sure there's something for you. Uh, there was a new episode of Dylan's other show, the No Limit Wrestling Show, but with him and Xavier. And they talked about the absolute unicorn promotion that was JD Star. Um, just a trip, really. Yeah, um, the world champion at the time I was watching it was like definitely a Shark Tsuchiya ripoff, which if you guys know anything about Shark Tsuchiya, crazy wrestler to be ripping off, <laughs> like wild. Um, but yeah, it was a really fun time with uh with my buddy widescreen and obviously with Zavi. Uh, one thing is uh, we have since the beginning, like since the second episode of the show, we me and Zavi have been making the joke that we are going to revive Arjian um in our own new light and uh they did that <laughs> so that's crazy i mean that, that was a big pop for us um but yeah the most recent episode is on the youtube so go check that out i would be much obliged if you did because um yeah i put a lot of time and uh energy into that and i enjoy it a lot so i would like it if everybody kind of gave it a shot all right um I suppose moving on from that, it was a pretty big day yesterday uh, for Stardom. They had their business presentation. Um, so there was a lot in this presentation. It was like there was a lot of announcements. So there was a lot of stuff kind of newsworthy going forward. So we're just going to go through it. Um, there was a lot of ridiculous shit said yesterday by people who have never watched a Stardom show in their life. You know, I woke up too late for all this because I woke up and you were mad. Like that that's <laughs> that is <laughs> <Yeah>. what happened. <laughs> It was absurd. Like, I heard some of the Cliff Notes versions of the things being said, and I was like, yeah, these people legitimately don't understand what they're talking about. And I don't normally do that, okay? You can view things however you want to view them. When you're just factually incorrect, I have to be like, okay, maybe you should cool your jets here. So um, I don't often think this is a good show. But I think this might be one of the better places you can go for people to break down this presentation and to understand maybe what's going on. So um, we're going to go through it. We're going to go through all the announcements. Uh, I'm going to use the thread by uh, Hey Karen Sensei because she is a translator and she translated yes. a lot of details that maybe the Stardom accounts didn't mention. Um, so the first thing they announced they were bragging about is uh, they've made a lot of money I think they made 1.5 billion yen in the last business year. Their business yep. year isn't January to December. It is July to June. So between July of 2022 and June of this year, 
they made 1.5 billion yen. That is like That's... seven times what they were earning when Bushiroad bought the company. Yeah. It's it's pretty remarkable, honestly. Mm. Like the growth is ridiculous, and that's that's what they saw when they bought Stardom. Like Bushiro didn't just go, "Oh yeah, we love women's wrestling now. We're gonna buy Stardom." They said, "We see business potential A in Stardom." Money. So that is what they wanted was the money making, and they have. They've made it very, you know, a revenue driven company. So fair play to them. Um, they also announced that they are going to start their expansion into Southeast Asia. This is something that's been hinted at for a long time. Um, the Stardom roster, well, not all of the Stardom roster, I think it's mainly Cosmic Angels. They're going to be involved in two Bushiroad ex Expos. Uh, the first is on the 21st and 22nd of October in Thailand. And then the next is the 24th to the 26th of November in Singapore. So Bushiroad, both for New Japan and Stardom, is really aiming towards that region of the earth for expansion. You know, they're, they're growing into America and they're growing into Europe. Is Southeast Asia. That's where they see the most potential. Yeah, and I mean, like, that's another case of, like, kind of strike where nobody else is, almost. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, every, everybody in Japan, well, most companies in Japan that are trying to go elsewhere um, are trying to make a foothold into America, especially. Um, the UK is kind of dead, but, you know, it doesn't stop some people. But mostly, they are trying to get a full foothold into America. So, uh, I think the idea is smart. That's like, oh, well, there is a lot of untapped potential in just other places in Asia. Uh, because you, I, I believe somebody, I, I believe it was Ash, which is one of the, the DDT guys. Um, he said that, like, wrestling traditionally has been seen as very, like, what do you, I think he said Anglo-Saxon. And just very Western. Like, yeah. even even in Japan it's all very Americanized because that's kind of like where it came from almost. Um, and so there's a lot of wrestling fans and a lot of wrestling promotions even in Asia that are just not looked at at all, um, even by Japanese promotions. So it's kind of cool that they're doing that. I think New Japan specifically are starting like a kind of, if anybody remembers and you shouldn't because it was a long time ago, the SWA belt was originally meant to be for this stardom world alliance thing um with a bunch of companies around the around the world new japan are just doing that with southeast asia so that's an interesting for them i don't know what star has to do with that but uh yeah it's cool that bushiroad's kind of seeing a untapped market and going for it because not a lot of wrestling companies are willing to do that you know yeah i i think i, I can't remember who said this but i remember somebody was saying that they think stardom especially could grow in that region because mm -hmm. it fits the idol culture you know people yeah. all over that kind of region will see natsupoi and they'll get it you know so i think that's one of the reasons stardom is so heavily involved is there that's an easier sell to people than maybe new japan yeah totally um and like i said there are already like companies there like i, I have a buddy who works for a setup i believe um that it's you know like there there are places in Southeast Asia that have wrestling. It's I think it's interesting because there are certain countries that just don't know what pro wrestling is, like quite literally. Because um, I also have friends who grew up in Abu Dhabi had no idea what the fuck a WWE was, right? Um, but these places do, and they have pretty pretty sizable wrestling markets just within their own communities and within in their own atmosphere. So it is smart to go at it there and i'm excited to see what kind of vibe that brings like I, i've said this before i think it would be interesting if they stopped just bringing in white women and brought in a couple of the standouts from uh the smaller companies around asia but you know that that might happen because uh and again i'm not going to act like i'm a expert on this but my last thing to say is that the only thing that a lot of the wrestlers that come from southeast asia and from just places in asia do is they usually go to america because it's like yeah. you know th there's a sizable scene like i said but like ultimately like if you want to get a lot of reps if you want to get all you know like just having more having multiple wrestling companies in a small location like we do in america is usually how you get you know more reps and stuff so it would be cool if there was another avenue for wrestlers out there to go um and not just kind of 
try their luck in in North America. But yeah. Um, beyond that, uh, th they floated the idea a lot of the schedule in Stardom changing. Like the wrestlers were part of this presentation, and they said like we want to change this. Basically, um, it seems like they're going to change the GP. Uh, Julia mentioned the chance, the possibility of there being a shorter like, stretch for the tournament next Which... year. <laughs> Got it, dumb. I'm gonna be real. Um, yeah, because she was like, I mean... she was like, why do you give us so many off days? Why not yeah. kill us quicker? That's my question. Why don't you kill us quicker? Um, which I and I mentioned that last last week that it's like a big issue within New Japan's roster is them saying, "Hey, you're gonna kill us if you keep doing these one month, you know, ten match tournaments, um, like you've been doing." And and Bushiro heard that and said, "You know what? The women should do that too." So that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how condensing it and making them work more in a shorter space of time will benefit. But I'm also not a wrestler, and I probably should have tried to ask a wrestler, because I think, was it the Young Bucks maybe who said the worst thing is taking weeks off and then having to take the bumps, because it makes it worse? Like, yeah, I feel you know, like that, they that distinctly said, like, we took three weeks off and falling in the ring felt like death. So maybe yeah. it is the case of just keep going. Um, but I don't know. I'm not a wrestler. Probably should have asked one. But uh, also, like that, that is likely true, and we definitely should have. I, I should have asked like Marta or something. But <laughs> like, I also think that there is a certain degree of that that's like till the wheels fall off, right? Because um, like, just physically, literally, like yeah, it'll it'll be harder to adjust to readjust after a week off in comparison to doing it three nights in a row, for example. But also. You're, you're, that you're still getting hurt, right? There's still trauma being done to your body uh, at a way more rapid rate. So just literally, it, I can't see it being better, <laughs> like just in terms of wear and tear. Um, though that is true. That's like probably there is a a preference to you know rather work you know three hellacious matches in a row and then get a week off instead of you know getting a week off in between every single match you do and that being a different type of struggle. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, they also announced, and this was a big one, on January 4th, 2023, Stardom is running the Tokyo Dome City Hall um, on the day of Wrestle Kingdom. And they've laid it out so that you can attend the Stardom show and then essentially go right to Wrestle Kingdom. Um, this is something that, like, everybody does in, in other, like, countries. I mean... Companies run leading up to WrestleMania, and then you can go to WrestleMania. Um, I think was it for All In? I think Eve and Rev Pro were like managing the schedules so that you could go yeah. to one, go to the other, then go back for another show. So wrestling companies tend to, outside of Japan, they tend to spread things out so you can go to as many shows as possible. Um, so Bushi Road has taken that idea and basically on an okay. If you're in for uh, New Japan, why don't you go to Stardom as well? You're not going to miss anything. It's right there. You know, Tokyo Dome City Hall, it's right there. Um, and then you can go to Wrestling Kingdom anyway. So I think this is really smart. I think this is one of the smartest things to come out of this because, I mean, this is going to end up being one of Stardom's probably better drawing shows of the year because this, this is a venue that can hold about 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. And when you consider the holiday bump plus people just going to be there for Wrestling Kingdom... You imagine they're going to get another strong, a uh, strong number for that show. Obviously, the big um, controversy Caveat. is that this is this is TJPW's day. Like they usually, oh, yeah. they have been running Cork and on January fourth for Etenyon consistently. So they this is fanning the flames here of like Stardom versus TJPW of Stardom is basically coming into this territory and potentially stealing some of that audience away from Tokyo Joshi Pro. So that's, um, that could be something. Yeah, I mean, uh, for those that don't know, Corken Hall and uh, Tokyo Dome and Tokyo Dome City Hall uh, are all within like, like right, like I, I'm, I'm putting my hands up, they're right there. They're all right next to each other. So um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a turf war here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy I'm not going to Japan this year because uh, I would be feeling really weird 
about deciding because yeah i mean like for for a joshi family that goes to japan for the holidays tjpw is kind of a must even if you're not like a big tjpw fan that one four show is kind of like their corkin right like that's that's the tjpw show i would want to go to if i was going to tjpw show i'm not a big tjpw fan in the year 2023 but like realistically um but the promise of a mayu singles match like that's hard to probably some other big stuff. I mean, they're oh, not. Oh yeah, they're definitely. Not but but they're already like... they're already right now. They're like, oh yeah, and Maya's gonna wrestle in the main event of a singles yeah. match, and it's gonna be fun. Uh, like that, like that sells a ticket to someone like me immediately. Again, I'm not going to Japan this year, but that that's an immediate, you know, like oh, that's immediate sway for me. <laughs> um, they did confirm that this show means that there will be no stardom wrestlers on Wrestle Kingdom, which I'm completely mm. fine with. Um, you know, Kyrie Tam got seven minutes. The other ones were tags. I generally think New Japan fans don't care. I mean, if you listen to any general wrestling podcast, when it came to Wrestle Kingdom, they would just hand wave the stardom match. Like they did not give a single shit. And uh I think it's probably the same for the native audience. I mean, I don't think stardom last year had any massive boom in attendance because of Kyrie versus Tam. So it's probably just better to focus all of their attention on TDC Hall and giving the best show stardom can. Um, now, I don't know what that means for like Mercedes money, maybe being on, on Wrestle Kingdom, you know, the, the New Japan strong women's belt would be, I assume, defended on that show if she's holding it. So maybe that's what it means. But I know stardom wrestlers is there will be Mercedes money against somebody. Um, but uh, there will definitely be no stardom wrestlers. Stardom said as much themselves. And Mayu was very sad. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, an obviously, smarter business decision for stardom is, oh, well, let's just focus on what stardom, you know, does and not having to loan out our wrestlers to this company that doesn't really care for them. Um, but I also think that, like, one, just in terms of uh, accomplishment. I think wrestling in the Tokyo Dome, especially in a singles match, is a pretty big deal to most wrestlers in the world. Um, and the fact that Kyrie and Tam are the only ones that will have had that uh, had that honor as women uh, of this, you know, century, is kind of insane. <laughs> that that they that they like the one year that Mayu didn't make sense to be in it uh, is the only year that they do a singles match in Tokyo Dome, but. I digress. Um, yeah, I think it's a shame that, you know, they don't get to wrestle in the Tokyo Dome. They don't get to wrestle uh, on the biggest stage in Japanese wrestling. But it's smarter. You know what I mean? So pros and cons there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I guess the the counterpoint there is might reinvigorate people to make stardom a Tokyo Dome worthy company. You know, because that's obviously... The, I don't think that's like, happening. <laughs> like, I feel like they will run it eventually. Um, just even I mean, just their goal was 24-25. Yeah, um, but then, like, COVID destroyed everything, so... You know. Yes. But I feel like if you can get... What did they get, like, 6,500 at Yokohama Arena last year? Mm. Just bump that up a couple more, and I feel like you could run the Dome. But, you know, I feel like that's the end goal, anyway, for Stardom, is to run it themselves. I don't know. I feel like the Tokyo Dome... Obviously, there's no, you know, uh, <laughs> low end, uh, you know, commitment. Like you don't need to get any amount of people into Tokyo Dome, but I feel like you need to get at least like 12k, <laughs> like at least double that, if not triple that, to make it not a complete and utter failure. Um, but you know, well, I, know. I mean, yeah, that would be cool, but I, I just don't see it really happening. I feel like they'll do it just to say they did it, because that's. A big part of wrestling is just oh well we yeah. did it you know they did run Osaka Joe Hall for yeah. like a thousand people yeah peak COVID shit was crazy like, you know they ran Yokohama Arena and got like six and a half thousand when that's a what twenty thousand seat venue to, just to say you did it you know so I, I I think it's not as far off as you maybe do um, but that's a story for another time anyway. Um, they announced the date and location of All Star Dream Queendom. 
Uh, it is on April 27th in the Yokohama Buntai. That is a brand new venue. It is the former uh, Yokohama City Gymnasial, Gymnasium. Uh, so it's, it was knocked down and rebuilt. And it is supposedly a 5,000 seat venue. So you're going it's to also Yokohama. not built yet. Uh... Yes, it's not finished. <laughs> Uh, so they they would be concerning. like the first they'd be the first ones to running it basically it's it's meant to finish in April and they are running yeah. it in April so yeah, yeah. Um, but that is similar to the Yokohama Budokan they were also the first company I believe oh, yeah. to like run because I'm pretty sure that opened like mid COVID or right mm -hmm. before COVID uh, so yeah this is the second time that they've ran a Yokohama <laughs> arena for the first time <laughs> that's true. Um, so that's the big April show. That's the show we keep talking about as in uh, you have December and then there's a big spring show. The big spring show is this uh, all-star grand all-star dream queen. It's them. interesting that like that is the bigger show now. Yeah. It's like they yeah. kind of just like vaguely like, oh, yeah, we're going back to Ryogoku. Cool. Like they just said that on the on the five star final. But this is like the selling point of stardom. You know, I mean, like. In terms of like of how Yokohama? they presented it, isn't Yokohama like a historically big spot for Joshi? I feel like a lot. I of mean, yes, and also for Stardom. Like, if you notice, Stardom has more major events in Yokohama than they do in Tokyo. You know, like really. Um, so yeah, like they, like they run, and we talked about this for the five star. They run Yokohama Budokan way more than Oda Ward, and it's like mm. Oda Ward's arguably a better arena, but they just have a bigger foothold into Yokohama, even though they're kind of next to each other. But, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I don't know. Um, it, I think the way that I look at it is that it's interesting that the Cinderella tournament uh, is the one that leads into that. And the five star yes. tournament is the one that <laughs> yeah. leads into the year. It's end. a bit of a reversal. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, I mean, this year, the, the Cinderella tournament just didn't even fucking matter. <laughs> so, but like, it's, it's just a it's strange. I'm into it, but it's strange. Definitely. Um, they announced that the uh, Mayu movie, Runaway Wrestler, will premiere in May of 2024. Um, so that'll be something to keep your eyes on. I don't think it'll cause this explosion in, like, a fan base for stardom. But I think it'll be interesting to see how... We see Zac Efron isn't playing Mayu Utani, so, like, that's not <laughs> what yeah, we're going for here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't know how this will work, but I think people... The movie could gain traction, and it could you know get a few people to check out stardom but i think that would be an interesting thing to keep an eye on um the next big announcement is they are uh, they're doing again the tokyo mx with stardom they do a 12-hour marathon on new year's day which is kind of big i think to get a 12-hour block on television to like basically advertise your show and half of it uh, is just the roster doing bits it's great yeah, so you know, it's it's another way to capture new fans is by going, hey, it's New Year's Day, everybody's at home, you have twelve hours of television, so it's uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, apparently, the wrestlers were very upset last year by the fan vote thing. I think that was the postcard, wasn't it? And people yep. gave out about it at the time, so they said they're going to change it. They hope to, who's to change a, who it this won year. that? I think it was Tom, Tom or not Sapoy. It was. It's always time. I think it was not the, the, the idols never lose. Let me tell you that much. Um, and it was funny because Mina was the one that was upset about it, and I was like, "It's definitely because Tamara not supporter winning." Yes. <laughs> um, the other big thing then, because they moved on after that to the New Japan part. Um, historic crossover. That's yeah. So historic thing. crossover two is in 2024. Uh, they have no date, no venue. I think they'll just announce stuff at a later date. And they they kind of floated the idea of having fans vote on the teams. Uh, Shota Umino said that. He was like, I don't want to wrestle women. So I think people should vote. And I was like, damn. Running from the grind here, buddy. Uh, I think he just doesn't Oh yeah, to Oh, yeah. Because Umino was like, bro, why would you why would you slap Micah? It's kind of fucked up. And Tanashi's like, I don't know. I did what I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that was what happened. Um, yeah, so... I mean, it's got, we're kind of talking about this like weeks ago. Um, they might replace the Wrestle Kingdom 2 that they usually do with Noah. They might replace that with Stardom and do Historic Crossover. Uh, Ooh, interesting, yeah. Which they usually run uh, around my birthday, which is also near your birthday, so late January. But it's also, that seems kind of close. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. They might They might just wait it out until like, I don't know. Well, because they did it fiscal year, right? So they they mean by July next year. 
they're gonna run it so that might make sense like february you know like like late january or february uh just because they have a lot of shit past that you know like they have the big show um a couple months later and they have a tournament and all that so maybe they just do it then you know around new beginnings time i can see that yeah i would say february march is probably about the best time mm-hmm. if it was january they would have announced it because it's yeah you want to get ahead of this like you want to announce this in advance um i imagine we'll know the date maybe around the time of uh the sumo hall show or wrestle kingdom is when they'll they'll make it official um i can see that but I could see it definitely being like early next year, definitely Q1 of next year. Yeah. Um, and I'm I excited for that. I, the... I like those shows. Uh, I, I like those yeah, shows the last one was good. I, I thought it was fun. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything from the presentation, basically, that didn't involve New Japan or like tiny little tidbits that I would have missed. Um, yeah, there was nothing. Not really says that she wants to be back by the end of the year. Like, that's the. Yeah, she basically was like, I don't I don't feel injured and I want to keep wrestling, but they told me to stop. And I was like, oh, honey, that's not... Yeah, just listen to the doctors on this one. Um, yeah. Oh, they also did I think a YouTube the thing. The interesting thing about that is uh, she's tag champion. So I wonder when she'll be able to drop that belt. Uh, yeah, that's You know true. what I mean? Because, like, is, are they going to get the tag league winner at Gold Rush or are they going to have to put it off until the end of the year? Well... I'd say keep it until she's she's ready honestly oh well, yeah um they had her um they they were talking about the youtube subscribers they were they were showing off their youtube subscribers as i said they would a few weeks ago when i was like oh they stopped streaming new blood i bet you they'll brag about their subscribers and they fucking did um and they had a chart like showing where the biggest uh, audiences were and they had poor nats boy try to say indonesia and i'm like that's just not fair <laughs> like she, she doesn't know what Indonesia is. Like that's just not. She just fair. goes where you tell her to go, man. Just yeah. So I don't know. Um, but that is that is the business presentation. Oh, there was a lot of. And Mayu has a radio show. Yeah, to promote her, uh, her movie. It's, and uh, uh, and that's why was like, and Mayu tried to invite the two wrestlers onto it, and that's why was like, I feel like it's a bad idea. Yeah. Have you met us? <laughs> That's true. They have not got a brain cell between them, honestly. Like all, they had uh, Julia, Mayu, and Natsupoi there, and I'm just like, there is not a thought happening on that stage. Um, except for that Julia, dumb. who wants, except for Julia, who wants uh, <laughs> more death now. That's that's Julia's uh, point of attack. Yeah, but it's uh, it, it's just interesting because you know Mayu like notoriously did not finish school. Uh, Natsupoi is an idol. And Julia simply wants to headbutt things, so I, I think that's... Natsupoi uh... notoriously thought that the biggest prefecture in Japan was the D- Dominican Republic. Yeah, um, yeah. They so are not fun. the people I would bring to a strategic presentation, but you know what? You get yeah, that, but, but <laughs> Natsupoi kind of looks like Harry Potter. She looks like an old lady with, with Harry Potter glasses, so like, you know, yeah. she must be smart, right? Well... <laughs> I don't know. She couldn't say Indonesia, so it's, uh, yeah. you know. Anyway, uh, beyond that, we had uh, some announcements from Stardom. They announced some of the card for the 29th of uh, October. This is the Stardom Halloween Dark Knight pay-per-view in Tachikawa Garden. <laughs> this is basically a Stardom and Showcase with a with a big Red, uh, red Stars block match. So we have a Coffin 4-way. Aya Iwatani versus Crow A, Crow B, and Crow C. Coffin match. Crow C uh, should know. be Lady C. I think that'd be very funny. That would be very good. <laughs> Just for no reason. Yes. Uh, I don't know how they plan on doing that, but you know what? Sure. Uh, we have a normal singles match: the Halloween Mask versus Marai. So, um, yeah, okay. Uh, a, t- a handicap match: Mina Shirakawa versus Dump Matsumoto and Zap. See, that's evil. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, why I... would? He... <laughs> like, I, uh, I get. Putting Mayu in a three-on-one against the Crows would have made more sense than putting Mina in a match against, like, two wrestling legends who will kill her. But I guess... You have to account for the fact that Dump cannot do a singles match. She cannot walk. Well, no, but, like, put Waka in there with her. Like, like give her a release, man. Yeah, maybe. But you know what? It 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 doesn't matter. This this is basically a Stardom and Showcase. This is uh, we have a and I love Stardom. We have a Zombie Rumble. 
Yeah. A zombie. So I imagine everybody's dressed up like it's their face painted and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's crazy um, that we we used to have the mask fiesta. Yeah. And that's now we true. get this. Um. In the midst of all that, we have a red goddess block <laughs> match: Suri and Saki Kashima versus Risa Sara and Kurumi Hiragi. So that takes out my thought that uh, one of the crows might have been Kurumi because she was very tall. Um, oh yes. Well, I don't. I so. honestly, who even knows? They might not even unmask them. It. I. Yeah. Um. The other announcement was for uh, the November 18th Stardom Gold Rush. Apparently, this is called I Don't Know, but Stardom. That's great, honestly. Um, and this yeah. is a World of Stardom <laughs> Championship match between Tam Nakano and Suzu Suzuki. I swear to you, the show is called I Don't Know, but Stardom. I'm not lying. Uh, you can check it yeah. yourself. I think you I'm, were I'm checking, checking it. it right now. It says it right there. Old Rush, I don't know, but stardom. So, I don't know, but stardom. EDN yeah. Arena. Yeah. See? That's I, I, I told you. Um, that's a crazy... So, yeah, because like, even like... That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's all for the news, I'm pretty sure. We probably forgot something, but I don't uh, think we did. It depends on, on how we feel about, uh, about uh, rumors. Ooh. What's the rumor? Oh. That something big is happening, to the point where oh, Sonny was shoot. like, "I can't yeah. be on the internet anymore." Uh, that that was very me. interesting. Yeah, because <laughs> um, because I got confused, right? Because Dave, Dave did what Dave does. He's had word mm. salad, so he yeah. was asked by a super chat, "Do you think AW is working with Stardom?" And he said something along the lines of, uh, "There's something big that I'm not at the liberty to discuss, but it's not." working with aw if aw were to ask me i would tell them to work with stardom so he mentioned aw so much that i thought he said they're going to start working together but it was mm. just typical mm. dave speak he would he meant they are not working together but they should there's something big happening with stardom that he cannot discuss and sunny but said, if aw needed to know i would let him know <laughs> yes um and sunny said i am excited so yeah and that he cannot be on the internet because he's scared of leaking it. Um, so it's a big deal. Like that. That's because at first I was like, oh, maybe they're like. At first I was like, oh, maybe they're like, oh no, running an American show or running a big show in in Southeast Asia or something like. You know, maybe they're just running a show. Um, by what Dave said. But then when Sonny was like, oh, I'm excited and I need to not be on the internet until it's announced. Uh, I was like, okay, so this is bigger than that. Um, it's bigger than like an update to Stardom World, which is what I've been asking for for the past mm-hmm. four years. Um, it's bigger than you know a lot of that stuff. So, no clue, honestly. Uh, honestly, like, not but it is an interesting. It is an interesting thing because like if Sunny's excited about it, that means that like it probably has what's best for Stardom in mind. It's not like them working with WWE type of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I'm hopeful that it's not something bad, but at the same time, I don't know. I'm for a bit like, concerned still. For about a day, I thought it was they were going to run the dome because I was like, that would make sense as to why they're pulling in all the legends. You know, the legends drawing at yeah. the dome would have made sense. I thought that's what they were doing, but I don't know. Um, but since they have that uh re- that uh April show, and they announced that already, I feel like the dome would have to be later. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, I don't... Unless it's a year-end le- next year, which seems like a... idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's going to be very interesting. Unless they got, like, a TV deal or something, but I feel like that would be very... I feel like it's not, like, a Dave News thing, though. Mm, unless it's, like, true. a US TV deal. If they're going to start putting... That's Star what Room I was on, thinking, yeah. I was thinking, like, US in... TV. I don't even know what what channel it would be on. I don't see why they aren't on US want, TV. Sorry. Like, why hasn't Access picked it up? I mean, Access they... picks up everything. I don't know. You're yeah, good. that's a good point. Like it's, the, it's the same format as the New Japan show. It's just an hour long highlight thing. You know, I, I don't yeah. see why they haven't gone on. Maybe Access. maybe they do get a TV deal, like a small one. Yeah, who knows? Honestly, who knows? we will be blindsided when it happens because I will have forgotten all of the teases by then. But um. Yeah, that's, Stardom that's has merged with New Japan. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah, 
<laughs> the reason Sonny is excited is because he doesn't have to run the website by himself. Yeah, he anymore. can leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I think it's time to get on to the review part of the hmm. show. Um, so I didn't discuss this with Dylan beforehand, but I was thinking, and now I'm going to cough because uh, this is not yeah, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so the two house shows that happened were both building to the show we watched anyway. So I don't, I don't see a reason in discussing them at all. Like I know one I of them say, went up, but I think there's what? one thing to discuss that I know of from the first house show. Um, is Hanan pushed a draw against Shuri and and Mina, which is not what you yeah. would expect. If interesting. Like because Hanan Hanan kind of got a little bit more, a little bit more protection. Not a lot. I mean, she just lost last week to like Micah in a random tag match, but a little bit more protection. Just a little bit. Hmm. Well, good. Other than that, I don't think there's anything. Okay. So I think we can just go straight to the pay-per-view. Um, so, this was on October 9th, 2023. This was Nagoya Golden Fight um, in Sachi Miracle. This was in the Dolphins Arena, and this got 1,315 fans. It's pretty much right in line with what they've done here every time. They've basically smacked into a wall for most of these pay-per-views. <laughs> Um, although I think this is better because it went up against so much competition. Like this was, oh yeah, it's had uh, a New Japan show that got five thousand people. Um, the TJPW ran this day, the same day, and they got eight hundred or nine hundred. Um, this was in Nagoya though, so this was down yeah. south. That's true, I think. but even still, there was a lot of competition. Uh, because everybody was running. Like all Japan ran and did like sixteen hundred. Like everybody was running. So I think thirteen hundred isn't. Um, it's quite commendable in the context there that there was so much happening that day. Um, yeah. So in our opener, we had a high-speed championship match. May Sarah beat Saki Kashima with a her own version of a La Mahistral in just under seven minutes. Um, I thought Do you Saki... That yet? No, they haven't. They just called it a La Magistral. But I know it wasn't because she did a setup differently. Yeah. Um, she did not stand into it more than a roll. Um but yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Um, I thought Saki like very clearly worked heelish and slowed it down to let May kind of show off a bit more. This was just a full May Sarah experience. She was just dazzling. Um, I think yep. that was the per the purpose of the match. It was supposed to go, hey, here's the new high speed champion. Look at her. So uh, I think I give a lot of credit to Saki there for kind of playing the bad guy and also slowing it down, just letting the other wrestler really shine. Yeah, I mean, May came out with an Anai tile, so we should have known that there was no way that yeah. she could lose. She had that passion on her side, uh, of her passionate auntie, uh, as she calls her. Um, yeah, I mean, this was, like, about in line with the other Saki high-speed defenses, but I think this was better, like, just, like, by a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, like, it was it was cool. Um, I'm happy that May Sarah has the high-speed belt now. Uh, a bit concerning, like, I feel like the issue with the high-speed belt is never-ending. Because the second that she won the belt, Rossi's like, you're so much better than the high-speed belt. That's what he tweeted. And I was like, see, this is why the high-speed doesn't work. <laughs> it's because as soon as somebody wins the championship, you're just like, you know what? You are so much better than this. We need to get you out of there. It's like, you're booking the company. This is you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, it was, I'm happy that she's champion. I thought that Saki, despite not being, like, the best champion in terms of, like, defense for defense, I thought it was fun to see her with the belt. And I thought it was cool that she got a singles belt um, after a lot of her hard work. So, yeah, I'm happy with the whole situation. It wasn't, like, great, great, but it was good, and I'm happy May Sarah's champion. Yeah, I mean, they did a good job building to it. You know, as soon as Saki won it, she was like, yeah. I don't want to wrestle May Sarah. She's too fast. And so you kind of knew then that they were going to do a build-up to May finally challenging. So I thought they did a good job of making everybody aware, hey, May Sarah is going to win but we're going to make you wait for it a little bit. And uh, I thought they did a good job with that. So I still believe she should have been the one to beat Azami. I think that would have just been the most obvious thing to do. Um, but I can't really complain with how they did it. You here. know, I do think that, like, as I said earlier, I feel like the high-speed championship is the least planned belt in, a, in stardom. It feels like they're so like okay, and then we do this, and then and then and then we'll figure it out. Um, I think it probably would have been smarter if Mesera beat Azumi, and then Saki Kashima beat Mesera, like out of nowhere, and then Mesera had to fight to get it back. Uh, I think that probably would have, and it would have given some longevity to like the 
the belt because now it's like from Mace Era, where do we go? Do we just have another Azumi reign where she has defends it twenty times before somebody they sign somebody or somebody gets you know strong enough to kind of be on that level of a high speed wrestler? So I don't know, but I I, I agree with you. I think Mace Era over Azumi would have made more sense, and then it's like Kashima could you know revival Mace Era last month, and then Mace Era could fight for it back a little bit down the line it, just to make it longer because <laughs> again i don't know what the fuck they're gonna do now because you know no one in sight for mace era yeah i mean i don't even know who's in the division anymore <laughs> like exactly I, that, that's I the other thing is that... and uh tecla maybe um yeah. tecla mace era tecla over mace era could make sense i think that would Probably yeah, I'd smart. be here for it. I mean, Tecla's awesome, so, you know, let's go. Maybe they'll get but some yeah, foreign I mean, wrestlers. They used to pat it out with the foreign wrestlers a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, I don't know who's who the works, modern equivalent so. of Evie. Billy yeah. Starks does not work fast, and she's an AW. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, but, you know. But, yeah, it, I mean, all the good, good, all the great high speed wrestlers are no longer in the division, and Koguma actively does her best work outside of the high speed division. So um, that's, it's a, post Azumi is concerning for this belt. <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah, the next match was Seri Ano beating Azumi in eight and a half minutes with a jackknife uh, roll up. So uh, th- this was a rematch of their GP match like two months ago where Azumi got the win. So Ano got a win back. And it was pretty similar, you know, a lot of like, Azumi doing high speed and Ano being like, I will kick you in the face, stop moving. But then Ano would do the high speed and would be really good at it. And the high speed actually got her the win because she, she pulled out a roll up kind of out of Anu, nowhere. Next so. high speed champion. Um, Let's go, honestly. No, I, I love this match. I thought it was really, really good. I was probably better than the tournament because it didn't have the uh, displeasure of being on a like house show in the middle of the tournament. Um, that is easily easy to forget even though it was a good match um i was just like probably a bit better because uh anu is just so good on pay-per-view as is azumi like there are certain wrestlers who are just like you know you want to see them in a singles match on pay-per-view and these are two of them so yeah those are really good and yeah anu's new gear is dope i love it i think it's really really cool um and azumi's got her got her new jacket uh it's not as cool bad, as the road, because they both it. they both like obviously got stuff made for uh this show and then they couldn't do the tag title match and i was like oh, and we know what really broke my heart which what? is out of character for me but uh starlight kid she every time she would have a match she would post like oh this is the mask i was gonna wear and i'm just like these masks look so cool like <laughs> like this is such a, this is so sad because like she's for whatever reason she saved her best masks for the weeks that she's injured. <laughs> I was like, this is so fucked up. Because, <laughs> like, her, her Kyoko Inoue one looked dope. Um, her one that she was going to wear at the Izumi, uh, you know, 10th anniversary show looked dope. I was like, this poor girl. She got these masks custom made. They look dope, and she can't wear them. That's really sad. But, yeah. Injuries, man. Just yeah. It up. They have um, completely run amok on, uh, on, on poor stardom. But, um... Yeah, that was that was a good one, very and good, very, good. very good one. And yeah, I felt bad because uh, they clearly had like effort into the gear and then couldn't get the big match, which I, it was always kind of like, oh, they they put effort into that. That's that match would have been uh, fucking insane too. Oh man, like this the this tag. this was a great show, but I feel like with that tag match, it would have been like, holy shit, forget the GP, because uh, it would have just been that good. But yeah, that it, uh, it was good enough anyway. Um, I think I, I mean I just like Soriano, so yeah. um, did not nice like the guy. next match. I, I, I feel like you you know this. Uh, yes, it was a UWF rules match. Suri beat Mina Shirakawa in just under eleven minutes with a referee stoppage due to knockout. Yeah, um, I mean I don't like UWF style most of the time you know the siri konami one is like a real outlier because they just kind of kicked each other a lot more um and you know that's kind of cool this just had nothing like i you feel like funny? even there oh, this funny. was the better of two uwf matches that happened on october 9th 
because uh, I watched a really shitty one from Glate. Oh, <laughs> I was nice. like, holy shit, man. Like that, like, because usually, like, Glate is very hit or miss with their UWF stuff. Um, like, I've seen some of the best UWF matches I've seen in Glate, but then I've also seen, you know, the Awful. Ibushi trainee and oh, God, uh, yeah. a 55 year old Masakatsu Funaki. Uh, just, no, I don't want to, I don't want to see that uh, in Glate. But yes, yeah, so this was a better of the two uh, UWF matches that happened on this day, but it wasn't very good. Uh, but mm-hmm. go on. I mean, I feel like even if you like the style, there was just nothing for you here. Like they weren't yeah. even there wasn't even like purposeful grappling. There wasn't any targeting. They were just flopping around on the ground doing loose stuff. They were just mm-hmm. the part where they were doing the exchanging headlocks. I was like, that's not how any of that works. You cannot do <laughs> a realistic fight. And then do the most fake grappling possible. Um, the submission transitions were just like really loose and like not at all well executed. And they would do strikes, and you're like, okay, oh, hey, that's good. But I just think the grappling was so poor that even if you love UWF matches, there's nothing here for you. Like the grappling wasn't good at all. So um, yeah, Which, I, yeah, I, I, I love. Awful. I do love UWF matches. Like typically, I'm a I'm a big fan, especially ones that like you know. Uh, I've always seen it as like wrestling matches and wrestling stipulations. The beauty of them is that they will either limit the wrestler or they will like unleash the wrestler. And the limitations are usually more interesting to me. And I think UWF kind of falls in that, where it's like, oh well, you're not going to do like typical you know pro wrestling, and that's kind of the beauty of it is that it's like it really strips it down to bare bones. And you could see what they do with it. Um, the issue with that is that when they don't do anything with it, it's just bare bones, right? That that's it. it there's nothing more to it. Um, I feel like they didn't they didn't you know compound on anything. You know they they didn't make it bigger than it was, and it just felt like the most fine UWF match I've seen. Um, the weakest of the three that Starm has done, at least the Saki Kashima one, was like. Saki Kashima like trying not to die and that was like the point of it is that oh you're in Shuri's like domain and you're you're going to get killed but you're doing it for your homie so uh you know poor one out for like that was like kind of there was a, a story to that the Konami one was just a great UWF match um and this just didn't have anything particularly notable about it except for like some high kicks that re- looked really dope right um Mina hit one that was sick a roundhouse and Shuri won with the buzzsaw so those were cool those were nasty uh but yeah i mean it wasn't much there wasn't much to it also mina got eaten alive so like that's what i expected but it was it was rough it was it was more rough than i was expecting um yeah like they tried to salvage it a bit after the match with shuri kind of doing a promo to put over um mina she was hey you know (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like, hey, you tried my style. Maybe someday you can beat me. And like, I get it. You know, Mina, perennial underdog baby face, gives her something to aim for. Maybe they eventually have her beat Siri and it's like a big deal. But it really fell flat after such a poor match. It was kind of like, yeah, all right, sure. <laughs> um, better. Like, that, yeah. that was pretty much all I got from it. So, which is true. <laughs> Then things got worse because afterwards they revealed that the videos about Mina having a mysterious person uh, watching her were for Dump Matsumoto, which um, it did did the get a big reaction. <laughs> it was insane. Yeah, uh, I, I will admit they, they it did get a reaction. I mean, people seem to be like, "Oh my God, it's Dump." Um, yeah. Tell me, yeah. tell me in the heat of of Triangle Derby that. Um... Koku Akudome, the atrocious alliance, would be more prevalent in stardom than colors in the second half of the year. Oh my god, yeah. It's, all Kapsaki hasn't been around in forever. No. Nope. Which is good. Nope. None of them um, have. None of them have. Yeah. I miss Rina. Uh, Rina Amakura, please come back. Uh, yeah. We need you. Hey, her and Yuko Sakurai <laughs> were cool. Let's, let's get them back. For yeah, they, they're sick. Um, but yeah. I Actually, think... the best Waka performances on a consistent basis were alongside yes. Rina and <laughs> yes. Yuko. They that really worked. That was good. Um, but yeah, uh, Dump Matsumoto challenging Mina. Um, I laughed know, out loud. Yeah, I, I can I can feel that. Um, because here, like we obviously love Dump Matsumoto. Oh yeah. But like this was your white belt champion, and she's about to lose to this like 
a woman who cannot walk. And I understand it's on a Halloween show. But it's the kind of thing that when you see that creeping in, you're like, I hope this doesn't become a consistent thing. You know, like, I hope this is the last we see of Dump. And until that's it's another team. Legends thing. That fear of Mina getting buried by by the Atrocious Alliance is what Halloween is all about. But baby, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That is that is very fair. That is a good this point. This is Halloween, baby. I hate Halloween anyway, so this is you know, this is this just makes it worse. I'm not gonna um, argue with you. Halloween's kinda hit or miss. See, I mean I don't I don't I don't like it because I have to answer the door a lot. So it's constantly <laughs> like getting yeah. up. You know what's um, funny? The past like for the past like ten years I've lived at houses that nobody goes trick or treat. For some reason. We like, like never used to have any, but now there's like so many people around here that there's just yeah. kids coming out of the woodworks. Because like so, when um, I was when I was younger, like the house I lived at, like growing up, growing up, literally like trick or treaters every half a minute. You know, I mean yeah. it was chaos. But then I moved like a few blocks away from where I first lived, nobody. And then I moved again, nobody. And now I'm here, oh. nobody. And I'm just like, damn, this is like we always have candy. Like we're always like, oh, in case, and just never, never happens. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, lucky. Honestly, I feel like sometimes I should just like close everything and like pretend I'm not here. But you know, I feel like that would be mean. So yeah, you can't do that. You, growing up, always making fun of the houses that said we don't celebrate Halloween. Leave. You know, it's like ah, uh, you. Oh, you, I should you, do you, that. Oh my god, yeah. I should be like no. Oh yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a thing out here. Like very regularly. Really? Right Oh no. Yeah. That's... I mean we we all like are like boo fuck you. Not, not literally, but that is what would happen. <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean that that happens all the time. All right, okay. I should um We're so old, man. That. We're so old. Think about what we're talking about right now. <laughs> How to deter trick or treating children from your household. Yeah, that's uh well, you know. Bitter bitter old men right here. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, anyway, the uh, next match was an Artists of Stardom Championship match. My Sakurai, Tekla, and Julia beat Megan Bain, Suzu Suzuki, and Micah in five and a half minutes. When Julia won, she pinned Micah with the Gnosuke clutch. Yep. This was bad. <laughs> I hated this so much. I was oh. so just done. Like, the Suzu Micah thing just kind of jumped the shark for me. On this show specifically, because I realized that like, like it keeps compounding and it keeps like building and it's like okay we're getting somewhere and then we do the same thing that we did last month except Mike is a little bit more mad now and I'm just like, let's just get to the point, homie. Oh, and if I the point is, it. go ahead. I kind of liked that. I feel like um, the GP final loss breathes some new life into it. Especially with Suzu costing yes. her the match and Micah just beaten down on her after. Like, this is clearly an unhinged woman. And DDM are like, please, like, like don't don't beat up Suzu. And I think that's going to cause trouble. Um, now, is it a few months too late? Uh, yes, because she's been that's teasing my point. for forever. That, that but... is my point. Is that I was like, okay, brother. Yeah, but I, I think they've fallen into something very interesting. Because they had to presumably change the GP final. And now they have Micah pissed off and unconfident and heading into tag league ready to beat the shit out of everybody i will say the other issue is that um megan bain leaves in december oh so, really yeah um i'm pretty sure uh because like month wise unless she's staying for the mariah amount which she definitely isn't like i can't see her doing that um she dips by the end of the year like post post the big show i imagine oh i thought she had like stuff announced that made uh, her you know available uh, i've this is what i've heard okay oh, um I see. I see. is yeah she's probably not going to be here for the new year is basically the you know maybe a set like it would be cool if like she got the mayu match and that was like the send-off for her on that uh, tokyo Dome city hall show maybe but like she's not going to be here for triangle derby if that's happening uh, is is kind of how I'm hearing it. I don't know what the fuck Micah does because like she's on the outs with DDM because they kind of favor Suzu over Micah. Um, and I don't know. Like a part of me just wishes that the Suzu Micah May thing could have lasted longer without them doing the bullshit. Yeah, because like they were really fun together until 
they started doing miscommunications in every match. And I was like, oh, so I'm just never going to have fun with this again. And I thought that was like, oh, so they're going to break up soon. And they just didn't break up. <laughs> and and now we're here like four months later. I was like, oh, this, this ain't fun. Um, Micah also kind of looks like a tool. Uh, Julia is still big sissing both of them. Julia's role in this is really strange, I must admit. Yeah. Like, it's very out of character. I don't know what her deal is. Like, her pleading with Micah to stop fighting, it's like, your whole thing is fighting. Like, wh like what? <laughs> like, yeah, that's your entire thing. And also, why are you still favoring Suzu over Micah? Like, Micah's in your group. You were meant well, to... Well, no, that, like... that makes sense. Why she is favoring Suzu is because she likes Suzu more than Micah, and that's the issue. Like, that, that, like that makes sense from a story-wise. Micah just had like... the makeup thing after the match in the GP. It was like, hey, let's be stronger as DDM together. It just runs counter to what she said a month ago in a promo. But that's but she also said Suzu joined DDM. That's true. But Suzu hasn't joined. So it's like maybe but you should be kinder to your stable mate. Who do, who does she want in DDM more, Mike or Suzu? That's the story. And oh, the Suzu. answer is Suzu. Yeah. Exactly. Um so I get where she's at. Like I get that Julia like it's weird because Julia is Julia and she's an asshole and she's like chaos personified like that like that's her entire get so her being like hey don't fight no no inner fighting even though one of them isn't in the group no no inner fighting let's all get along like that's bizarre but it's also like a way of her like being above it which i think is really dumb uh because you have the five star finalists uh, once again getting like big broed by julia and i was like really that's uh, okay Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess, you know. I guess I can see where you're coming from. It's definitely less than ideal, but um, you know, I I'm overall just, I'm just not. I'm just happy not Micah sure. has something. I'm just happy she's like aggressive yeah. and losing matters to her. Like she didn't just shrug off the defeat. It was like, oh, I lost. I'm pissed off. And I do I like think that, that like the story of of Micah being like, at first she was like, I, I couldn't do it. I need to quit, and then being like, I couldn't do it. I need to make Suzu quit. Yes, I think yeah. that's a cool, I think that's a cool, like, storyline progression, right? I think that's dope. Mm -hmm. Like, that that by itself is cool. I think everything surrounding it, I'm not crazy about. It just, like, this match was just, like, the, the, oh, brother, we're doing this, huh? We're still do we're doing this again, and, yeah. oh, boy. Um, I um, hope that it kind of, like, progresses soon, because uh, yeah, if it, it doesn't, it it's going to be... <laughs> I feel like something has to happen after Tam Suzu. Like, Mike has to come out and just be like, you fucking suck. You suck. <laughs> and I like, just rub it in or something, right? Um, or maybe cost her. Maybe they're doing angles now. Maybe she cost Suzu. That would be new for a Stardom World title match, huh? That'd be um, very Micah versus Suzu. That'd be very much yeah. this feud that they're doing. Yeah. Um, Don't know if I'd like it, but it'd be, it'd be something. Yeah, uh, the post-match promo from Micah was very angry. She was like, Suzu, if only you weren't here, everything is your fault. Uh, I'm going to destroy you. And uh, Julia brought up Himeka. She was like, look, Himeka's gone. You're not alone, though. And I'm like, well, you're kind of favoring She's Suzu. She's pretty alone. She's pretty yeah. alone. So, yeah, very intrigued by Micah currently. I feel like they've fallen. It's also funny something. how this kind of relates to the Risa Sarah story. Because, um, like, I also felt like like Julia was like kind of owning Risa Sarah and then being like, Don't worry, you're 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 not alone. I'm still here. And it's like I don't fuck you're an asshole. I don't want you around. <laughs> and like I, I think that's interesting that like Julia almost isolates wrestlers <laughs> in a in a weird way. Um mm -hmm. and then it's like, Don't worry though, you're all right. And it's like I, I don't want to hear that from you. You just beat my ass and made me feel bad. That's Julia. Yeah, um, but yeah. Um, another little thing from this is that um, as Tekla had kind of mentioned in the pre-match conference, uh, she stole the headrest from yes. Megan Bain because she said, "Hey, if we win, I should get your your head thing." So she took it, and uh, Megan Bain is like, "I'm going to kill you." So that, that's it's very funny because they were like a killer team, uh, and then Tekla touched her headdress and it's like uh, <laughs> on sight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna kill you. I love that. That's great. Oh, so Julia, uh, this I don't think this got um, much attention in the post-match comments, but Julia was like, "Hey, Micah, your feelings are probably in a mess right now." 
but I won't ever betray you. Um, you can do it with me. You can do it with Tekla. You can do it with Sakurai. Um, you can also give your fullest with Suzu. So, um, yeah, she she wants a bit more teamwork from from Micah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Demanding it's, a bit more. Teamwork. I mean, like I said, if Megan's leaving, Micah doesn't really have a home. Yeah. If she if she you know betray, and I feel like Suzu and Julia they might as well be tag team champions already. You know what I mean? Like that, like within the next year, they are winning those belts. So it's not, I can't see either of them. Like that, that's, that's the bigger issue is that I don't know. And again, this is a stardom thing. They usually figure out a way to make it cool. And I'm not saying this is bad and whatever happens is going to be bad, but I don't know what they do. Cause like, I feel like a Micah, you know, Micah leaving DDM at this point doesn't, work but i also think that suzu kind of needs to go to ddm just because of how they've yeah. weaved this story but obviously they can't coexist well the worst possible thing for this would be for micah to just go oh yeah cool i'll just like fall in line yeah you know but also would, like so. but what is the alternatives that's that like i'm interested in this i'm not saying oh they're fucked but i don't know what they could do you mm -hmm. know because like Oh, like I, I thought, oh, Micah and Megan can be like kind of an island and maybe, you know, get like Eva in there. Get, But I feel like we're too, it's too late to like start a foundation for Micah outside of DDM. Because like, again, Megan's leaving, Uh, you know, Ida has a belt, you know, like there, there aren't people that work, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess you could pull from different places, but May Sarah is Suzu's partner. Like that's, oh, she's not what? Micah's partner. That's true, but you know she could she could convince May Sarah. Um, maybe she got some of the JTO crew. I don't know. Maybe Aoi shows back up. Remember Aoi? Um, yeah. Maybe you know, I mean like... I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's just that that's kind of where I'm at. Is that it's like yes. I'm not liking what they're doing right now with the story, and I don't know where they go from here. So I'm not as of right now. My current stance is I don't really like the story. I think there's a lot of cool wow. elements to it, but I think it's Crazy. kind of like messy and not i just very... like seeing somebody care about losing honestly it's yeah no cool. that's nice like it never <laughs> happens especially wrestling. match that important and yeah. i think i think like i said there is a lot of interesting elements to micah and Susie's relationship like i i uh like it's funny and i'm just you know digressing at this point but i immediately thought when i saw that picture of micah just staring up at suzu that it's like micah is like looking and in the presence of a of the sun right and she's getting burned so hard by this like gigantic star that's right next to her and she's gonna go fucking insane from it and i like that that's what they're going with like you know she refuses to let suzu burn her by just being better uh, but you gotta get somewhere with that you know i yeah. know it's been a week but it, it's got rehashed right now so hoping for more yeah a Micah Suzu white belt feud would be like the coolest thing right now, but um, neither. I of mean, them Suzu should is beat Tam, and champ. then that should be the air end. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I especially don't think if so. Tam is, especially if Tam is uh, not super physically conditioned. To yeah, we'll 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 mention that. Don't you air. worry. Don't you worry. Um, but anyway, the next match, which is pure speaking, speculation. Speaking but, speaking yeah. of the white belt, uh, we had a Wonder of Stardom Championship match. Mirai beat Momo Watanabe in 15 minutes with a lariat uh, i thought this was a great match this is everything their gp match was and more just uh, a really great time uh prime momo just kicking the shit out of somebody throwing them around and then mirai firing back and throwing them lariats like only she can um i really enjoyed this this is the kind of thing that the white belt is built on just this like really fun 15-ish minute match that both wrestlers just look great coming out of you know what's interesting is that, like, if the first half of the Konami match and the second half of this match were combined, it'd be, like, the best match of the year. Yeah. Um, but I do think that kind of took... I feel like Momo was very much like, okay, I'm going to do what I've done in every other big match I've gotten in Oedo Tai, and that's how we start in this for the first, like, five or six minutes. And then from there, it got great. Like, don't get me wrong. I really like this match. But I did think that was kind of funny that it's, like, Momo had this killer tournament, and then, like, the first few minutes was just, like, the most 
everything you've ever seen before um momo heat and i was like oh okay this is gonna take a minute and then it it, it obviously got there because momo is just oh when momo is good she is so good uh but yeah. when she's not i just get really depressed um <laughs> and not saying that the first half was like bad it was just like this could be better do better and then she did better and i was very happy with it so um yeah and we've talked right. about this a lot momo's counterattacks are so cool like she's like that being kind of her like her calling card is that it's like oh you're gonna go for a move and i'm going to somehow kill you for it like that's i love that i love that so much it's kind of become like her best area as a heel is just like somebody going for something and her just being like, nah, you die because you made this decision. Um, I think that's great. And yeah, I thought the, the kind of last half of the match was very, very good. Um, and yeah, Mariah with the clothesline from hell. I need to find a good name for that. Cause it's just a clothesline. It's just a lariat, but it feels like a clothesline from hell. So yeah. Okay. But it's better. So, you know, yeah, but like she doesn't have the, the fat arm that, you know, Bradshaw has. She doesn't was, need it. Fat, you know what I mean? Um, her arms are pretty beefy. I don't know. No, her her arms are beefy, but they're not like you know a, a Texan fucking fat ass. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's something <laughs> well, different about that. I would hope not. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but um, I, I, I like hate her Bradshaw. <laughs> oh, dude. Everybody should hate Bradshaw. He's, he's a dumbass. But um, yeah. Good clothesline though. Good clothesline. Good clothesline, yeah, gotta admit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought this was great. Um, I thought Marai has been given the ball and has run with it pretty firmly uh, over the mm-hmm. past month or two, which is good because they waited a long enough to fully pull the trigger on her. And with so many people injured, they are gonna rely on her heavily to like have these great matches. You would think, because this didn't even get some main event. <laughs> They pushing her down the card steadily. They are. That's I love true. It. But um, I guess you had Kyrie and uh, the red belt, so I can see why that kind yeah. of happened. But yeah, I thought she she's just been a shining star lately. She's really took on the mantle of the Saya run, where it's like I'm just gonna have these fantastic matches that's gonna get me over. Um, and I thought Momo. I mean, the worst part is that Momo had to lose. <laughs> like she was, she was great, and she has been great. Um, but obviously now she's just kind of gonna go back to. Uh, Way to tie tags. Being 2023, Mama Watanabe. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One day we'll get you out of there, homie. <laughs> One day. Um, I don't think there's anything really of note in the post match promo um, or the. I expected the clown to show up, but. So did I, actually. Yeah, I thought they would do that, but I guess not. It's just a one. I mean, if it is Tomoka Inaba, she was busy wrestling at a different show in Tokyo. Um, oh, yes. But. So that kind of like confirms, well, not confirms that, but that like does push the narrative further that it might be Inaba. Uh, but they, I thought they would have done like a vignette or something. Mm. But no, just nothing. One show worth a build for Halloween. Yeah, any, if anybody did not see that Corkin show, they're going to be so confused. <laughs> oh my God. So Stardom just gave away the trick. They mm. said in their report, Kyrie, who has completed a contract with WWE. Yeah. Does that mean they've just given away that she's gone back to the WWE? I That's mean, Kyrie cool. did say a major company that I once worked for has offered me a contract. And it's like, hmm, I wonder, is it Lucha Underground? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, I just, I didn't think they were, <laughs> I didn't think we were allowed to say that yet. But, uh, okay. I don't think um, they are. Like, if they said it, they gave the game, like, they gave the, the letters away. But it's mm-hmm. more or less been said by, you know, Kyrie. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but anyway, this was the Kairi send-off match. Uh, Kairi, Nanai Takahashi, and Mayu Iwatani beat the classmates trio of Hazuki, Koguma, and Saya Ida uh, when Kairi pinned Koguma in 25 minutes with the insane elbow. How um, do you feel about this? I haven't talked to you about this at all. It was great, but in like typical uh, late Kairi fashion, she was like the worst wrestler in it. Because um, <laughs> yeah. it was Nanai like, and Ida that did the heavy lifting. And Kogumo. I would I would argue Kogumo was big in this one. There was a lot to the Kogumo thing that we will get a chance to get to later. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was great, but a little bit long. It was like that um, the Momoe Nakanishi comeback yeah. tag where it was like, oh, this is cool, but you could have ended it like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> did you watch this uh, like live or do you watch it after the fact? Live, yes, I was awake. Mm. 
the okay. show started at like nine o'clock. So I was so I yeah, actually I, at this, this stage. Yeah, at this stage I was like, uh, Kyrie, get out of the ring. I have places to be. <laughs> like get yeah. the show over. Because uh, it was a Monday. How like, long did this go? Twenty five minutes. The time. 25 jesus christ that is long um yeah i thought it was great i got like this is my favorite match of the night um Mm -hmm. i like i've I've said it a million times and you've said it before that's like koguma when she decides to kind of like give a shit is genuinely one of the best wrestlers in the world like and i'm not joking (laughs) like she is so good at it at just wrestling at every aspect of wrestling um but she's just like uh you know you get that a couple times a year, homie. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> I'm a bear. Well, I was gonna end with Koguma, but I guess okay. We, we can we can start. We, we can, I mean, it's up to you. It's up to you. We can start. I could go Koguma. into the other things, but well, no, we can. We'll start with Koguma. Um, okay. so I feel like Kyrie... I thought Koguma was like the star of the match yes. for me. I get the sense that Koguma, uh, or Kyrie rather, wanted to do the finishing stretch with Koguma, mm-hmm. and that's why it happened. And I remember distinctly. Before Koguma came back, Mayu did an interview where she was like, this Koguma girl was one of the most talented wrestlers Stardom has ever produced. She is a genius. I think all of the older wrestlers like one of the best they've ever been with. And they all call her a genius. Every single one of them refers to her as a genius. So I think Kyrie wanted to go out of her way here to go, hey, this is Koguma. This is the Koguma we know. And then in her post match, even she was like, "Hey, Koguma, like you have to p- power on. You know, you said you don't have desire. I think you're lying. You have so many feelings. Yeah. You need to power on after this." So I think Kyrie really wanted to put over Koguma here because her and her other kind of colleagues in that generation seemed to have a lot of respect for Koguma. I think that was why the finishing stretch was Kyrie and Koguma rather than you know a Kyrie and Ida. Or a Kyrie and Hazuki. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I think that was an interesting thing is that because Kyrie called back to like Kokomo doing an interview and calling herself like a, a role player, you know, and, and being like, oh, yeah, I'm cool with just being like the, the third or fourth in, in stars and just kind of, you know, doing my doing my job and like doing it well. Um, and Kyrie's like, no, you need to you need to show them what what Kokomo is, you know, what I mean, like she was trying to like pull that out of her. I think that's really dope right like that's probably the despite Kyrie beating her that is the most Kyrie has put anybody over <laughs> in her time in stardom outside of mercedes which was in new japan um is her being like no you you're more than just like a role player you're more than just a a you know a good hand as as cody rhodes would put it uh you you could be like the best and yeah i i remember what you're talking about that Merce- that uh not Mercedes, Mayu, was like, I was actively jealous of Koguma, despite her being younger, you know, and despite her being less experienced, because she was just so good. Um, and I do think that is a very interesting thing, because, yeah, like, people who have seen Koguma in the past year, specifically, like, since the last five star to now, I don't think they would get it. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. we will always have that 2021 five star. Where Kogumo was just just decided to be the MVP of the entire fucking thing, in a in a five star that had like Takumi in it, you know what I mean? Not saying that Kogumo was like, you get what I mean? Like she was like one of the shining stars of that entire tournament, in a loaded tournament, one of the best five stars ever. Um, and since then she just you know was like, oh well, you know, I'm just gonna kind of do 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 Takuma pose. Uh, so I'm happy that they kind of brought something out of her here, and I thought this was a really great performance from her. Yeah, if if they like kick on with this, then there's definitely something for Koguma. Um, I wish Kyrie would, would stop saying singles championship because I'm cool with Hazuki and Koguma getting the tag belts again. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know, like, but as I've said, Koguma's worst work is in the high speed matches, in singles matches, in high speed. Um, okay, I, I feel like you're forgetting how um, good she is at high speed, but you know, sometimes. But like, I think about the Saki match. I think about last year she had an Azumi match that was like kind of weak. Um, she had she's been in great three ways and great yeah. like multi person te- uh, high speed matches, but I'm just not looking for her as the high speed champion personally. Like that's fair. Koguma is why there should be a, another championship. There should be a non high speed. Oh my goodness! Isn't that crazy? Time. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like um, there there was an intention here to make Koguma look good, but then they're never gonna do anything with it because we just don't push most of stars. So I don't know what the story is there. But I would yeah, like to which see sucks Koguma by the way because this like this constellation of stars as as they once called it um it's one of the best factions like <laughs> period like stars but by, by the time it's all said and done stars will go down as one of the greatest factions of all time just because of like they've had three eras where it's like oh that's like absurd even though one of them was just tcs uh, all withered and broken and <laughs> and all of them leaving at the same time uh but like Stars is so incredible, and I think classmates carried this match a lot because Kyrie wasn't in it a lot, and Kyrie wasn't always trying in this one. Uh, but I thought classmates did great. I loved the Mayu spot, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, where her and I were going to do a double team, and Mayu was just late for a second, and she just stood there. Like, she stopped, and then she stood there and just kind of giggled. And then she was just like, okay, let's try again. And I thought that was such a funny, like, little break from the action there. Yeah. Um, and then she did a crazy scent on. I was like, Oh, Whoa. yeah, and it was it was an insane spot. I understand why yeah. she wanted to get it right. Because uh, that shit was fucking killer. Um, like you said, Ko- uh, Ida was insane. Suzuki trying to get a little bit of fire out of Kairi by slapping her was, like, cool. Because I was like... I don't know. It felt like Hazuki was like, stop taking us fucking as a joke. Like, you need to fucking try to beat us down immediately and i thought that was great uh yeah i love this match that was really really good yeah no it was great um and you know Kyrie winning was probably the most likely result um mm. i'm not even mad um that none of the classmates pinned her i feel like unless you are gonna then push that person there's no point in having them pin Kyrie just to say they pinned Kyrie. you know I- I found this out after the fact, and I told you this, that uh, Hazuki's the only person to have pinned Kairi in her farewell matches. Cause this, is, this is her third farewell match, because she had a title defense, and then a gauntlet, and then this match. Mm-hmm. Um, Azumi pinned somebody else in the in the tag match. Uh, in the gauntlet, Kairi drew or beat everybody except for Hazuki. Um, and then now she beat Koguma. So yeah, I think it would have been a cool through line if Hazuki beat Kairi and it'd been like, oh, she just has your number in these in these farewell matches, but you know, uh Kairi ain't going down, brother. Yeah. And really, I mean, if they're not gonna push the person who p- who pins her, like there's no point in doing it just to say you did it. I, well I they should like push they should push Hazuki. They should. <laughs> that's my point. But like my <laughs> thing is if they aren't going to, then there's no point in pinning her. Like it would just be pointless to me. I know you can say, oh well they can say they pinned Haz or Kyrie and it's like, yeah, but if you're not gonna do anything, who cares? You know? So um yeah, I'm not like too upset that Kyrie won because I don't see them pushing either of the three in the next few months. So, you know, it is what it is. Um how you know this is Kyrie, the end of Kyrie's run in stardom. She's obviously going back to to the WWE. Um I hope she enjoys it. I hope she doesn't lose to either of the Nepo babies over, over there. Um, either. Isn't there like 70? <laughs> well, you know, the main ones. The main the main two. Um, yeah. They're not like uh, most girls. They have family in the business. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, I feel like Kyrie. It's, it's weird. I saw people who were just like, I don't care. Like, go away, Kyrie. Like, she wore out her welcome. Something fierce, which is kind of crazy to me. Um I feel like nothing. The thing with Kyrie's return is it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like excellent either. Um, like I couldn't point to this and say, "Oh, she was shit." It was like she was there, you know. Like that's largely it. Um, because there was no story or like through line for Kyrie coming back. It was just, oh, this person isn't in a story, so sh- they can wrestle Kyrie, and it won't do any damage to what our plans are. I feel like Kyrie that was. Person, man. Yeah, I feel like that was her spot more often than not. It was like, oh, you're going to do the least damage here, so we're going to put you here. There was no long plan for her in stardom. It was just, we're going to float you in wherever we can fit. I think that really hurt her and hurt everybody because she would just have one-off matches and then not be able to build on them. You know what I mean? Like, they had the Miyu Amasaki interaction in that Utami match. She just never got to face Miyu Amasaki again. Like, you couldn't 
there was no way for your Kyrie or anybody even to like build anything because she would just wrestle on the people. You want to know what's kind of crazy that I'm looking at now? Uh, Kyrie pretty much like exclusively fought against Queen's Quest, and still never fought Azumi somehow. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Yeah, like, cause... yeah, I'm looking back at like my match guy from last year, and it just like the Saya match against Kyrie was phenomenal. I loved that match. I would never go back and watch it because I know it was weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was tremendous. The match against Sai Kamatani and Lady C, best match of Lady C's career. Kyrie and Nanai. That was when we thought, oh, Kyrie's back. She wasn't. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, but other than that, like, the Mayu match was really good, but it also was the Mayu loss. Like I, I won't remember anything about that match except for Mayu losing and it feeling terrible and feeling weird. Uh like the, I don't know about Kyrie. Like it, it's weird. It is. Weird run. Um I think it's good that she changed her name because this was not Kyrie Hojo. Kyrie Hojo no. is not something she's ever gonna get back. Like Kyrie Definitely. Hojo is one of the best wrestlers of that generation. Like, if you've never gone back and watched it, she's exceptional. Um, and she never really hit the Hojo levels here, but she very clearly was Kyrie. She was a presence. The entrance was amazing. We'll never forget her comeback, but I'm also just like, yeah, you know, if you're going to go, then you're going to go, because there was no plan for you here. The, the, you know, Dardem didn't maximize it, and Part of that might be that she wasn't willing to lose, but you know, it's just that she's gonna go back to the the WWE. Um, good for her. I yeah, I don't know. All right. I feel like somebody like, and this is gonna come across as like very AEW build, but I feel like someone like Kyrie would be like such a addition to the AEW women's roster because they just need another good, like cap- competent wrestler. Uh, <laughs> and like you know, if you want competency, Kyrie's your girl. Uh, but instead, we're we're gonna get uh, I don't know, uh, her and you probably that'll be fun. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In twenty three, you twenty twenty three, uh, Kyrie. You know, yeah. trust. You know, it'll be it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good for a main roster WWE match. That's you know, that is valid. That is valid. Because um, I mean, I I look back at that EO versus Candice LeRae match. Both of them were past their prime at that point, and that was like one of the best matches in WWE that year. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, kind of how that works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, our main event was a World of Stardom Championship match. It was Tam Nakano beating Natsuko Tora in twenty-one and a half minutes with a Violet Screwdriver. Um. So I love the dynamic between Tora and Tam. It's just, yeah. it's very easy, right? The uh, yeah. angelic idol. And the demon who comes out in the weird gear. I mean, they've the always been perfect rivals. And that's the story yeah. of this match. Yeah. And I, that's also kind of where I this match got worse for me, almost. It's um, crazy. But we'll talk about it. I, I thought this was great. It was a bar mm. below the top two matches, obviously. Like, it wasn't as good as Marai Momo, and it wasn't as good as the last match. But I thought it was a pretty great showing, like Tora was embracing that inner full heel with the cheating and the weapons early on. And that left her to do all the cool shit late in the match. Like, she had all of her cool shit stored up. And obviously, Tam is going to do some crazy shit. Um, like, the, the headbutt on the rope and the fall after that was nuts. Yeah. Like, they are just ridiculous humans. Um, and I thought that was just a great way to end the match. Like, the finishing stretch was just them doing the big stuff. But the, the early portion was carried it because it was just natural heel beating the shit out of the natural baby face and you know that was kind of the best flow for the match um so i i enjoyed it for just the strong dynamic between the two of them hmm. i well first of all looking at the finish um i i often say that natsuko you know uh what's the word channels yuishino in a lot of laugher matches um this one especially because Natsuko, much like Yoshino versus Mako Satomura, hit every single move possible seven times, still couldn't win. Shit was crazy. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I thought that like there was a lot of cool in this match, but I also think that they were both wrestling slow. Slower than like their best gear. Or not even their best gear, but like slower than like even their like typical gear. 
which was weird. Because, like, we saw Natsuko versus Suzuki last week. Natsuko was full-on doing her burst offense stuff that I think is phenomenal. Um, and we've seen Tam wrestle at, like, this super, maybe not high pace. She's never been, like, a fast wrestler by any means. But at, like, this, like, very deliberate pace where it's, like, it's, it's always, she doesn't just, like, stop in the middle of the match. And it doesn't feel like it's taking 30 seconds to do one spot. Um and that's how it felt in this match. That was the only major issue I had was that just like it felt like they were wrestling in slow motion. Plus the seconds thing, which I thought was a cool stipulation in theory, but it really took away from the uh the atmosphere of the match, I think, because uh the stardom crowds are kind of dead a lot and the seconds are kind of what livened them up. So without seconds there are certain points in this match that definitely should have kind of gotten a pop and should have like kind of raised the the vibe and the momentum and it just didn't because the crowd just didn't care because seconds weren't there to tell them to care. <laughs> um, so I thought there were like issues with it, but at the same time, this is one of my favorite combinations in Stardom, right? Like I love these mm-hmm. two together. So I thought there was a lot of cool stuff as well. The opening, you will know how much I pop for it because they did the, the collision opening that they did in the 2018 match. Uh, and I loved it, even though they kind of like fell and it was kind of weird. I loved that they did the head-on collision stuff. Uh, I thought that some of the finish was really, really fun. Even though Natsuko seemed completely out of it by the time it was over, and like there were some issues. Uh, but yeah, it was rough just because of the the flow. It felt like it was very slow, and I just wanted them to be going at it a bit more um, than they were, I guess. Especially past the early heat where Natsuko was like outside of the ring, there she was fucking them up. Like past that, I was like, okay, now get into like the, like just like wrestle faster with more enthusiasm. I don't know. <laughs> right, I see. Um, well, I don't know. It was pretty great. Um, the finish was really uh, a choice because Tom, me and Tom failed to do the screwdriver once, and then she went for it again. And her knee just completely folded under her. Like, I saw a clip of it today, and I was like, how is that woman still walking? Like, full weight of her and Tora came down, folding on her knee. Like, that is absurd. And Tora took a pretty nasty bump as well. Like, I, don't, I thought Tora yeah. was hurt for a second there as well. Um, I mean, so, she was yeah. also limping away pretty rough. It's, like, that was a scary On her bad finish. knee. Like, very scary finish. Um, but yeah, like, Tom for a second i was like did she like destroy her knee are we gonna have another incident here with with stardom um but she she got up and she walked out but she very much favored her left leg she was dragging it behind her a little so that's something to keep an eye on anyway uh stardom hasn't said anything um if they would i bet you it will be tomorrow morning uh after we record because it's when stuff always happens um but yeah, I I was kind of interested. Like I thought for a second she had done her knee in because Suzu pushed her at one point as well. She, she did fell. her promo sitting on the floor. Yeah, it's like that is not how Tam usually does things. Uh, is she okay? Um, so yeah, I was I was very surprised after that finish that her knee was okay because uh, I saw a clip of it today again and I was like that is nasty. Like most people would be in three pieces after that. Yeah. Um, it was weird. Just uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I can see where it was great in instances, but just like I don't know, a, a, as a whole package and with the finish, that was really rough. It was just a strange main event, and it was a main event that I was that I was like really excited for. And yeah, I don't know. Tam is interesting. I, I, I yeah, I don't know. It's wild um, that. We we talked about this briefly. We were texting each other earlier. That like, she doesn't have a story. Like Tam's not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, she more than anyone is hurt by Saya being out because that's an easy yeah. one for her. But um, beyond that, yeah, she doesn't have much to to play off of with Suzu, especially. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird. Weird time in the stardom world. And it is, honestly. Very um, interesting company at the moment. Um, so, that was that show. 
I thought it was a pretty strong show. Uh, do not like the Monday shows, though, because I was like, I have things to do. Get out of the ring. <laughs> it, it, it is not as fun as the weekend ones. But, you know, it's, it seems, I don't know, they don't do them all that much. Um, there are three shows this coming week. Uh, there's no card for one of them. It's the Saitama show uh, this weekend. They haven't announced anything. Um, which I, I kind of knew they hadn't. I remember like, not seeing anything for this, but... Yeah, there's absolutely no matches announced, so we we can't even get an indication of who's healthy and who's not because uh, <laughs> they haven't got anything. I don't oh think boy. I missed. <laughs> yeah. I, like I don't think I missed it. They usually have a big announcement slate on their website somewhere, but I think they only did G the tag league matches. So, and this isn't a tag league show. Gold so, Rush. That is Halloween. That is ten yeah. nine. That's yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Yeah, nope. Nothing. Yeah. It's fun. So, <laughs> stuff. Um, so, Saitama, uh, good luck. Um, next show to preview then is on the 15th of November. This is yet another pay per view, I'm pretty sure, in Otaka. Oh, it's Ota Ward. Um, and <laughs> this is the Tag League opening day. We have a um, full slate. Oh, th- there's a few other games. They haven't announced the full card. There will be other matches. So, stuff stardom uh for I announcing the cards for what else weekend. could be on this fucking show because <laughs> i mean maybe, maybe like a pre-show tags, thing yeah pre-show yeah. match probably depending on who is not injured <laughs> it, it isn't it isn't oh but uh what day is this the 15? the twins are off this show so the twins aren't going to be on it okay um like in the pre-show or whatever all right that's oh. all i know <laughs> yeah um so we have a Blue Stars block match. Mariah and My Sakurai versus Tam and Yuna Mizumori. Um, this is going to be a fucking tournament. Holy shit. It, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, d- d- I don't know. Who wins? Uh, Mariah and Mai? Yeah, sure. Mariah yeah, and Mariah and Mai. Uh, we have another Blue Goddess match. It's Micah and Megan Bain versus Ami Sori and Lady C. Um, I feel like Megan Bain is going to win for her team. Yeah. Beat Lady yeah. C. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a blue goddess match. It's Mayu Utani and Hanan versus Hazuki and Koguma. That's a pretty Time big one. Some fucking wrestling. Let's go. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know, I don't know. how this goes. I mean, like, like FWC draw. would make sense. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like they probably want, uh, you know, what is it? Eye contact. They probably want them to kind of be underdog well, favorites in this tournament. Yeah, I, I would say this goes to a draw. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. Um, we have a Red Goddess black, block match. Uh, we have Mina Shirakawa and Waka Skiyama versus Sai, Ida, and Hanako. Um, I guess Mina wins because that's a, a real job squad right there. I don't know. It, it, Ida over Waka is one of the few points they can get in this block. So maybe they run with that. Maybe. Just to give him two points, but it, it's it's a hard sell for sure. Yeah. Um, we have Shuri and Saki Kashima versus Natsuko Tora and Momo Anabe. Um, I suspect it will give Saki one over on her former faction, maybe. That'd be cool. I, I, again, similarly, I think that Shuri and Saki should probably be like underdog favorites in their block, similar to yeah. uh, Mayu Hanan. Very true. Uh, and then we have another Red, red Goddess Black match. It is Suzuki and Mei Sarah versus Risa Sarah and Karumi Hiragi. Um, I expect the Prominence team to win because uh, I don't think you can have them attack Suzu and then just lose straight away. So it wouldn't make a ton of sense. You know what? Going into the last match, they might play into the fact that uh, Prominence as a, as a faction are a part of Diamond Egoist. Mm, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Because, I mean, it is against Julia. Yeah. But, we, yeah. The main event, then, is a non-title singles match. It is Julia versus Michiko, representing Great. Um, This being non-title kind of per- perks Mayers up a little bit. Like, maybe they do some bullshit and, you know, Michiko wins by, like, being you know, cheating on Julia, or they beat the shit out of Julia. I, I don't know if this is a one-off, or if this is part of a bigger, you know, story with, you know, Michiko and some others invading. Um, I have no idea. 
If Julia Watching... wins and this is the end, or Michiko wins, uh, or Michiko, Man, if like, Julia just something. wins in a s special singles match over Michiko, that's gonna be a little. And Michiko never shows up again. It's gonna be crazy. Um, yeah. So I we didn't get to talk about the Corkin last week because we didn't get to watch it uh, until after the fact. But it was really funny because Michiko's music wasn't her music. It was the late music. Uh, mm. Michiko didn't say anything about herself. She has said, "Let's." late or great or whatever um very like she wasn't even wearing her diamond egoist shirt she was wearing her glate shirt so something tells me that this is like a some type of agreement not an agreement agreement but i feel like this is there's more to this um yeah. and it's like michiko basically uh advertising glate by the way uh, that clip of, of Michiko uh, getting booed out of the building, it was because she mentioned she was in late. So... <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god. Um, yeah, the biggest the biggest negative reaction in stardom this year was Michiko saying I am from I am from great. And that's great. I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like they, they probably... Maybe Michiko doesn't win. She should probably win. I feel like Michiko should probably win. She either wins so or they like, beat Julia down after or something. Yeah. You know? Um, her losing yeah, I, and then getting the heat pack is such a Michiko thing to do though yeah <laughs> see I, I feel like the people great have even used lately have all been very stardom verse like they used to work mm. with Ice Ribbon and Sendai whereas lately it's Prominence and um, the Inabas uh, JTO yeah. and uh, Unagi Sayaka so I wonder if this has slowly been in the works where they are phasing out the people who aren't with stardom and bringing in you know, stardom adjacent, and now they're going to work with stardom. I don't know what stardom gets out of that because Glade has does, nothing to offer. Yeah, I mean, they, they do like having people from very random companies on the shows. Uh, yeah. They randomly had like Hiromu and the All Japan Junior Ace just in a tag match against each other like a couple weeks ago and nobody talked yeah. about it. I was like, okay <laughs> um yeah i mean like it, it would be it'd be very it'd be very uh glade of them it, it's glade yes. or great it doesn't really matter i say glade because great is such a word i use way too often that's gonna sound weird um but yeah it would be good for them uh i still don't know why michiko's here i like her a lot but like i said last week i she didn't leave on the best of terms with a lot of the roster and mm -hmm. uh she isn't like a draw she isn't particularly like she's not even protected in the company she's the ace of so oh i don't know i mean yeah unless they're really cooking something up here it, i <laughs> i don't know why they're doing either. this I don't, I don't especially without the title on the line yeah that's the strangest part um like like they have nothing to offer the their division is her and rinrin you know yeah. And you know, Rinrin's Maya... getting a lot better, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah but, you know, and then Maya Fukuda, who does not want to be a wrestler and keeps trying to be a you know martial artist, and then loses anytime they they yeah. give her an MMA match. Like, yeah, what is Stardom so getting out funny. of this? Oh. That, uh, Maya is so funny because she'll be like, "Okay, can I uh, can I beat the fuck out of that teenager over there?" Talking about Azusa Inaba. and they're like, "Yeah, uh, but you're gonna be cool for that for that actual fighter you're gonna get next week." She's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just yeah. focus on a teenager for now. Let's just focus on me beating the teenager. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, Glade is dumb, man. It's such a dumb company. And uh, Michiko's here, so that's great. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. I don't know. Michiko sucks. Anyway, I, I feel like I can say that. Boo! Fuck you. Dude, every every match I've seen her in lately has been really bad. Like, I'm sorry. It's, I don't know. She's good. I think she's the, good. The great matches are like genuinely bad. Aside from you know, that one Janai Kai Tomoka Inaba match, like that was cool, that was but cool. like most of the tags are just terribly boring. The, the uh, issue is, is that they're all the exact same. Uh, so if yes. you've seen one of the great Joshi tags, that's, that's you've seen her. One. That is her. That is how she has worked since leaving Stardom. She, she's all of the cool shit she used to do is gone. It's just heat, and I'm just like, this is so boring. So I am not. See, but you also don't like hopeful. UWF matches, which was where she kind of shined for her first run in Glate before she realized that there was nobody I to wrestle except for Chihiro shined. Hashimoto, uh, and Chihiro Hashimoto would just kill yeah. her every time. So, That's fair. yeah, oh. uh, I don't know. I think I'm hopeful. 
that Mishiko just really hasn't gotten a chance to really do anything in Glate, because as somebody who's watched Glate, she hasn't. Uh, and when she kind of has, when there's like small things that she kind of is able to sink her teeth into, she's usually pretty good. Um, is she as good as she was at her peak in Sendai? No. Is she as good as she was at her peak in Stardom? No. But do I think that she could achieve a pretty high peak when she's given something to do? I think so. I think this could be good. Uh, we'll see. I might be wrong. Julia is also like a very stylistic wrestler. So if her and Michiko just don't click immediately, uh, this is going to be fucking terrible. Because <laughs> they aren't going to, you know, go out of their yeah, way to try to make something time. work. Yeah, <laughs> but it could be time. great. I, I do think it could be okay. great. Shouts out sure. great the company sure. and also okay. the word. All right. Cool. Anyway, um, the cool show. Uh, uh, next Wednesday, on the 18th of October, Decade of Queens, the Natsu Samire Produce 10th Anniversary Show in Shinjuku Face, uh, which is basically sold out. It was so sold out, they had to add extra seats, which is pretty cool. Um, so, we have a six-person tag match. Natsu Samire, Rina Yamashita, Kaho Kobayashi, versus Takumi Aroha, Saki Akai, and Azumi. So, um, wow. <laughs> um, Ten years has cool been... Yeah, they're all, they all debuted in the same year. I think that's the gimmick there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's 2020 um, or 2013. All. Yes, that's pretty fun. It's also like one of Saki Akai's last matches. Oh, um, yeah, she's retiring. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, one of her very first matches was against Yoshiko in a World of Stardom title match. And now one of her very last matches that's crazy. is in a Stardom, a Stardom crossover show, technically. But yeah. Um, we have a singles match. It is Veni versus X. That was, as we know, formerly uh, Utami Hai Shishta, but they have uh, not announced their replacement as of yet. So I'm sure it'll be somebody pretty cool. Um, yeah, Utami's yeah. actually not injured. She's just dodging Veni. Yeah, I mean, why not? Maybe they get Sari. That'd be fun. Let's get People Sari. People love in here. dodging Veni. That, that'd be true. fun. I, nobody can lose, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a special show. You can nobody just... was going to lose anyway. Yeah. Um, the match after that is Sakura Hirota and Atsuki Aoki versus FWC, which is, is all kinds of amazing. And then we have the uh, Y Shirt Match Time Staggered Battle Royal. We're back. Y Shirt Carnival full of sexy wrestlers. Oh, yeah, Kawa, yeah. Sai Ida, Mai Sakurai, Waka Skiyama, Chairman Ram, Saki, Chanyota, Chi Chi, and Zones. Um, all taking part in the Y Shirt Battle Royal. If you want to know what that is, the Stardom website has the rules. All players must wear Y shirts. Adopt the original Y shirt match rules for the staggered entry battle royal from Pro Wrestling Wave. In addition to the normal rules of professional wrestling, if both of your feet touch the outside of the ring, uh, you will get sprayed with water guns. And if your Y shirt comes off, you will be disqualified. So, mm. there we go. Yeah. Uh... Zones. Uh is going to be yeah i mean the, the third evolution girl zones. retired <laughs> yeah sunny yeah it, it, it was a shame because like i i liked her she looked like cool uh but i'd never seen a match for her, and now she's retired and i was like well because i'm never gonna because <laughs> i'm just never gonna see her wrestle um he was the yeah, high speed one see yeah that's what i mean is that's like i've i heard great things uh, she had a cool look i thought she looked kind of cool um yeah and yeah, but back to the back to the match that matters. Um, Koguma and Sakura Hirota oh. <laughs> in the okay. same match is. I'm so That's excited for that. I'm it's so amazing. Excited. It, I love wave. The bear. Koguma's I gonna love do the wave. bear thing, and Hirota's oh, gonna yeah. be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" She's gonna get scared of the bear. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's gonna be so many good. Uh, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so many good things. This is going on Star and World. We will review it. Don't you fucking worry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ooh, and this and this will go on. This is happening. Next week, so uh, well, yeah, we'll get to talk about it. Like two weeks forward, from now. But yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Don't you worry. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Um, but that's everything. Um, I should probably end it because I I want to use the bathroom. So um, unless you have anything else, we should close the show. Uh, yeah, we're we're heading into the Goddess of Storm Tag League, which uh, it's gonna be fun. No. Yeah. Um. That FWC and Crazy Star match getting taken away from me is my 9-11. Uh, that is that's... fair. Man, what are we doing? Rough tournament, but we'll 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 stay at you. I'll probably make a spreadsheet for it just because I'm a psychopath, so don't you yeah. worry. Um, you know, there's actually going to yeah. be a week that I, I will not be on the show. 
Uh, I don't think I've told you this yet. So this you is the first you're didn't. hearing. Yeah, on the fifteenth of November, uh, I won't be mm. here. I won't be around, and that is a Wednesday. Fifteenth so. of November. Oh, oh, you're fucking me. Have you Why? seen the schedule for that? No. Is it bad? There's th- there's three review matches, and then there's <laughs> there's two there's two. That's the Gold Rush. That, oh, no way. Oh, I'm missing the pay per view. Oh fuck! This is a oh, lot. No. <laughs> this is a lot. There's also the LPW show that is happening with wrestlers. Now, now I'm disappointed. Um, yeah, yeah, New Blood just... too. You're missing New Blood as well. It's crazy. The preview honestly. for New Blood. Yeah. You know what? It's fine. We're just recording a different day. <laughs> I can't miss that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yes, potentially I won't be here for one of the shows. You will. You will have to make do. But um, yeah. Figure it out. With that it's time to close this show so if yeah. you want to stand you may stand if you want to sit you may sit believe today shine tomorrow you decide what you believe in joe joe